for joining me today. Well, I had some pretty positive feedback from the last um, optical illusion, Zentangle, whatever you'd like to call it, background that we did. And so I thought I would share another one with you that is super, super simple. And I don't know many of them. These are just a couple that I kind of uh, keep up in my brain. But I am just going to be using a fine liner pen today. And then this one, I feel like you're going to think I'm going crazy until it all comes together. So first thing first, any size piece of paper, any scrap, start off little, start off big, anything. So I'm just taking a piece of cardstock and all you're going to do is draw some little squares, like little squares, like instead of doing dots, make them little squares. Now you can do, you know, four across, four by four grid. You can do as many, as big or as small as you want to go. And all you have to do is create a grid with these little squares. Now they don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be filled in. I think if you had like an angled, a flat pen, that would make life a lot easier creating these little uh, squares. You could kind of just do one brush stroke with the little, uh, like a flat nibbed pen. Um, but this is going to work just fine. It doesn't matter if they're even, it doesn't matter if some are bigger, some are smaller. You're going to see when this works out that everything will be fine. So you have got your little grid created. Now this is the only bit that you kind of have to remember. This is super easy. So I'm going to start on the outside, going outside edge to outside edge. And then going across the top, I'm going to mirror the pattern. So if I did outside on the left, I'm going to do the outside on the right. Now, because see this is on the inside technically, I'm going to mirror that and do the inside. And then I do the outside, now the inside, now the outside, and I'm just going to flick back and forth doing kind of the opposite, but you're just going to mirror whatever one you did before. So this one's the outside, and then the final one will be the inside. Now you can kind of fill it in, you can keep going from left to right if you want, but I'm going to go down so you just do the opposite here. So if this one was on the outside, then I do the inside. Then the next one is going to be the outside. And then the next one is going to be the inside of the two squares. And then you just do the same. So if the top one is on the uh, outside, or you could call it the right hand side if you wanted to, then I do the left hand side, then the right hand side, then the left hand side. So you just keep going. So that one's on the outside, so I do it on the inside outside, inside. So you just keep repeating this over and over again until you kind of have the, you know, this way, this direction where the paper is horizontal at the moment. And then once I've done all of this bit, I'm going to turn the paper vertical and it really comes together. And this is when you can kind of start to see the pattern. So again, I'm just going to start on the outside here. So on the very left hand side, and then I'm going to mirror that when I go across the top. So I do the outside one over here. And then because technically this is going to be now the inside, I do the inside. And then you do the outside. And then you're going to do the inside. So you just go back and forth between the two and you can start to see the weave. I call this a basket weave. I'm sure there are several different names out there, but I've always just called it a basket weave. And then you can carry it onto the edges if you want to. And then we do the same. So at the very top, I'm sorry how I'm holding my pen here, it's kind of blocking it, but at the very top, I started on the left-hand side or what I call the outside. So then I do the inside of the squares, then the outside of the squares, then the inside of the squares. And then I just keep going all the way down. And I'm going to quickly go through this and show you just how this all starts to come together. And it looks like a very cool weave. And all we've used is a pen, and you, even if you don't have a fine liner, you can do this with a normal pen as well, just a, a normal bullet point pen or anything you have. So this is why it's fun. You can do it in any color. I think the black is very dramatic. Um, and this just means that it's very easy to turn into a card and create. But you can see here that we are starting to create the weave and it's really, really easy. Now, if like me in the beginning, you kind of did some of your little squares, they weren't perfectly filled in, you can come back and fix those up if you want to. Now, how cool does that look? It actually looks like woven. It's sort of, I mean, it looks like an optical illusion to me a little bit, but um, yeah, I guess it is sort of Zentangle, whichever, whatever you're into. And even if that's not your thing, this does create brilliant backgrounds for cards, super quick and super easy. So here I'm just making it go right to the very edges because I find it easier to kind of come in and do that afterwards. Now, there is another step that you can do. You can stop here completely. But I will just show you, and I'll sort of do half, 
but I add in these sort of lines that just gives it a little bit more to the picture. I think that this just adds, but if it's not your thing, then you don't have to do it at all. You can stop exactly where you are. If you want to, instead of doing these lines, you can also add a little bit of um, smudging, like a little bit of, you just put a little bit of watercolor pencil or something like that and you can just add a little bit more texture in those little pieces there and that also looks brilliant but when I turn this around and then you kind of take a step back I'm going to do it the other direction as well it just adds in so much more texture a little bit more detail and I like this so I'm going to do half here just so you can kind of see it and again your choice where you would like to stop I just do three, four, five lines, anything. I don't keep it all identical. Um, but yeah, you can see the two different ways and it's up to you. I am going to continue and do the other half because that's what I'm doing for this card. And then we're going to go ahead and turn this into a card uh, using what we've created today. So I recently picked up this little uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inch holographic mirror paper from scrapbook.com because I don't use holographic paper all the time, but I do think it is fun when I need some. So this kind of little size pad is sort of perfect for me. Uh, obviously you can buy this in much bigger sheets. There's lots of companies who do it. Um, and just go with whatever is your kind of style. In here you can see there are all different types of style. There's sort of really big, there's really small, there's really fine, there's just solid. There's also gold and uh, silver mirror cardstock. This has got all of it. So it's got, I don't know, four or something sheets of each one, which works out perfectly for me. And I'm going to use this today um, to create my sentiment. I also have some Stick It double-sided adhesive here. Stick It adhesive is the one that I use when I'm going to be die cutting because it die cuts beautifully, which means um, that when I run it through the die cutting machine, it's going to cut crisply without sort of getting stuck into the, the die. Whereas if I use the um, the other one that I love is the scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive, but it is much thicker and I can use it for die cutting, but generally it doesn't cut through uh, the backing layer, which is fine because it means you can kind of peel it off like a sticker. Um, Whereas this one, you sort of pull out the whole die cut and then when you're ready later on, you can uh, take the backing off to create a sticky back. So I have this happy birthday die set here. This one actually is also a scrapbook.com branded one, but this is a two layer uh, sort of die set and I'm going to use this in a few different ways. Today I'm just going to use it in one, but I want to show you some tricks with this one, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, so I am going to color, so I've done the, I've die cut the other one, it comes with two happy birthday dies. I cut out the first one, the top one, in the holographic cardstock, and then I cut out the second one here just in plain white cardstock. I'm going to use some Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. These are just um, alcohol markers that have three pens all in one. This is my type of alcohol coloring, but today I'm actually going to do a rainbow, so I'm only using one pen from each um, pen so to speak <laughs> and I'm just going to go through. Now I did make sure that there were eight colors that I had chosen of pens and that just makes life easier when I'm sort of dividing it up between all of the letters. These don't have to blend perfectly. You'll see um, when I put the top layer on that that is going to hide most of it but uh, because they're next to each other, so the rainbow, it just means that they're going to sort of look nice next to each other and blend relatively good anyway but I'm certainly not going for like a nice crisp a clean you know blend between each one of them it's just going to be it is what it is and it's the kind of card making that I like I guess now I know you might say it seems like sort of a lot of product to put for the stick it adhesive to put it on the back of that holographic cardstock when actually it's just so uh, little of it that we kind of use but the point is is that um, it is such fine detail that I'm sticking down it's just the easiest cleanest way for me to do it you could absolutely turn it upside down and then dab on some liquid glue I think that would work but here you can see all I have to do is peel off the backing and then I can line everything up really easy and it just gives it that little bit of shine and shimmer you could also just have some regular cardstock and do some embossing uh, on it and then die cut it I think that would look nice too just for an extra Extra little layer and to help all of those uh, letters and birthday all stand out this actually looks stunning it's very hard to catch the holographic nature of this uh, at the moment but I promise you in real life it is very sparkly so once we have done that I'm going to move on to creating the background but I just want to show you see when I put this on here the happy is completely and utterly lost the birthday sticks out 
good enough, uh, well enough, but the happy is not there. So this is the reason why I'm going to cut this up and change plans a little bit. Now I could have definitely made the happy a color. I was thinking about making it the red, but I'm just going to try a little bit different and veer off my original plan. So I am going to, um, I think the original piece of scrap was three inches by maybe six, I think, inches. Um, so it is bigger than what I need, but I'm going to cut it in the middle just to begin with. And then I will also have to cut off the sides later on. And that's okay. I just prefer to do that later just in case uh, my measuring when I made my card bases was a little bit off. I make all of my card bases and my card fronts. Um, so yeah, it would not be amiss if something <laughs> didn't quite measure perfectly, but we go with that. Then I'm adding some liquid glue this is the range it multimedium in the matte finish because i know this is super strong and not going to move anywhere it's not going to seep through and it's not going to wrinkle my paper um, then i decided i needed a little bit of something just to finish those off so i'm taking a scrap piece and just using the red that i used um, on the b of birthday my alcohol marker because it was sitting right there and i am just going to cut some very fine strips from this just so that i can um yeah as I said add a little finishing edge I could have used some even a black strip there might have been nice but given that this is a birthday card I was trying to lighten it up just a little bit um so I can get some really fine strips run a little bit of glue along there and then I can put the strips down again that's just a little finishing touch that I think makes it look really nice and I've still got lots to trim off these cards the cards that I make measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches and this one is going to uh, go sideways rather than uh, up and down but that's okay then I trim off the extra the excess and that way I can kind of get the bits of the weave that look the nicest or you know I can make it look how I want it to look and then the gorgeous little happy birthday is just going to go right in the middle. But I love how simple this weave is to create this basket weave. And I had a whole lot of fun creating it with just a black pen and nothing more. So I hope that you have enjoyed this one today too. And I'm sure that you can create uh, some gorgeous cards using this as some of your background. I will link the other Zentangle or Optical Illusion uh, video that I also did that's similar but I have a whole different layout on that one other than that thank you so much for joining me today I will leave links below as well as the link to the buy me a coffee if you'd like to support my channel I'll see you in the next video thanks bye